Hi, and welcome to On Console, the video blog about my journey to becoming a certified NASA flight controller. Hi again, Jenny here. So our first segment, which I covered in the last episode, is relatively short compared to the rest of the technical flow. So segment two, which I'm in now, is definitely a little bit longer because it's more on the ins and outs of the MDMs. So this episode will cover just the first module of segment two, CDH architecture and hardware. So one of the first things we learned was the different types and classifications of MDMs. Now the types are just internal and external. So obviously the biggest difference here is the location. But also, the internal MDMs sit on a cold plate for cooling, while the external MDMs interface with a heat sink for heating. Well, most of them do. Depending on the location of an external MDM, they may require more heaters, while others don't. Now, the classification of an MDM is based on what's inside of it. So, standard MDMs are kind of like worker bees, and they all live on tier 3, which is the bottom tier. Now, these ones are the only ones that have the capability for I.O., or input-output, and so they're the ones that work with sensors and effectors on board. Now, enhanced MDMs are kind of the thinkers and the system managers, and they take up most of Tier 2. Now, these MDMs have no I.O. capability, but they are able to have more 1553 connections, which, if you remember from last week, means they can connect to more MDMs. Now, there are some MDMs that are a little bit more epic than the others, and that's exactly what we call them, epic MDMs. These ones are almost exactly the same on the inside as the enhanced MDMs, but they're a little bit more powerful, and they help us to process payload data. Now, there are two epic MDMs on Tier 2, but the biggest epic MDM is Tier 1, the Kings, or the CNCs. Now, the hardware segment also included some information on our international partner systems, mainly the interface with the Russian segment, the Columbus module, and the GEM module. An important model in these relationships is what we call the four-box structure. Now, this is basically the interface between the U.S. side and the Russian side's main computers. It helps us maintain communication between the two segments for things like caution and warning or redundancy management. Now, the US segment, the Russian segment, the Columbus module, and the GEM module all have different ways of structuring their computer systems, and we do learn that there's some parallels between them. But obviously, everyone has their own unique approaches. It's the interfaces and how we're able to work together that really matters. We also went through every single kind of card that can be in the MDMs, as well as some of the processors, because there's tons of things that we can communicate with, Power supply, processor, I.O., analog, digital, and so on the norm? Huh. And a bunch of different ways to do it. An important part about learning about the cards is what happens when the cards fail. Now, some of them will kick in the 1553 fitter I told you about last time, and so we might lose communication with the remote terminal. Other cards go down though, and you might not know that you have a failure until you try and restart an MDM, at which point it won't start. Or it could just completely take an MDM down, and if it has a backup, it'll cause a transition. Luckily, we have some well-designed displays that give us a lot of evidence so that we can track down most failures right away. That's all for this week. Be sure to check out my other sites and pages, and take a look at the previous or first episodes if you haven't already. Well, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next week and for many more, as we get one step closer to being on console. Thanks, and have a great week!